Happy Friday out there, Team 42. It's your skipper here, Darius Dell, to present our Macro Minute for Friday, October 27th, 2023. Uh, well, as always, we'll start with our executive summary from today's leadoff morning note. Uh, if you want the analysis supporting these conclusions, as well as what to actually do about them in your portfolio, obviously you must be a client of 42 Macro. So we'll start with number one. Uh, the most important data in today's September PCE report were the inflation statistics, which contained fresh evidence of our staky inflation theme. The headline PCE deflator accelerated 80 basis points to a six-month high of 3.7% month, on a three-month SAR basis. The core PCE deflator accelerated 50 basis points to a two-month high of 2.5% on a three-month annualized basis. And then lastly, the core services PCE X housing deflator, uh, i.e. super core PCE, accelerated 70 basis points to a five-month high of 3.9% on a three-month SAR basis. Uh, number two, while these hawkish developments adequate, were adequately presaged by the September CPI report, they do lend credence to our non-consensus view that there is currently a renewed broad-based reacceleration of inflation in the U.S. economy from levels that were not consistent with the Fed's 2% target to begin with. Number three, the risk of sticky inflation becoming a consensus market narrative in the coming weeks will likely contribute to making this bounce in stocks as fleeting as the rallies that faded in late August and mid-September. Said simply, it is hard to envision the stock market rallying well past 4,300 on the XBX because it is unlikely the bond market rallies well past 475 on the 10-year in light of today's data, which contained fresh evidence of our resilient U.S. economy and sticky inflation themes. Transitioning to my Longbow dashboard this morning, we'll give you a quick rundown of global macro. So U.S. dollars got uh, uh, neutral short-term momentum, uh, bullish medium-term momentum. Uh, it's kind of right in, in the middle of its uh, trading range here, so not much uh, to do from an actionable standpoint. Gold, it's got bullish short-term and medium-term momentum also in the middle of its range, so not much to do today. Uh, S&P 500 bearish short-term and medium-term momentum. Uh, you're getting close to the lower boundary of the range, but not quite there yet, and the range continues to expand. Uh, you could look at the VIX here. Bullish short-term and medium-term momentum right in the range there. Uh, in terms of Bitcoin, Bitcoin's got bullish short-term and medium-term price momentum, uh, a little bit closer to the upper uh, boundary of the range there, but not, not quite overbought. Uh, in terms of Ethereum, Ethereum has also got bullish short-term and medium-term price momentum, but has lagged the move we've seen in Bitcoin. So uh, folks are trying to play catch-up trade there in Ethereum, but to my knowledge, there are no Fidelity or BlackRock ETFs uh, uh, pending for for the Ethereum token, uh, so it's uh, more of a sympathy trade, uh, you know, which in my opinion is less sustainable uh, than institutional flows into the Bitcoin uh, asset class. Uh, in terms of uh, Shanghai Composite, Chinese equities uh, bear short term, medium term momentum, uh, right in the middle of the range. There, not particularly act actionable today. Uh, crude oils got bear short term momentum now, but the bullish medium term momentum. Getting close to the lower boundary of the range there uh, in terms of WTI, 83 is probably the wrong price. Uh, it's probably you should be expecting something in the mid 80s, if not the high 80s, given what's going on uh, in the Middle East from a regional conflict standpoint. Uh, agricultural commodities, bullish short term and medium term price momentum right in the middle of a narrow range. How much to do there? And then base metals, bearish short term and medium term price momentum getting near overbought so if you're long or if you're short base or sorry uh, if you have if you have not been short china or base metals or anything like that for the, for the play uh the global manufacturing downturn uh, this would be a decent spot to think about uh, adding that kind of risk so i uh, will wrap it up there darius dell presenting our macro minute for friday october 27 2023 uh best of luck out there today uh as always we'll uh, catch back here uh to, not tomorrow but on monday uh, but i, I did want to uh, leave you with uh, one final thing we have our november 2023 monthly macro scouting report presentation coming out this afternoon. I highly encourage everyone to participate. Obviously, it's exclusive uh, for 42 macro clients. Uh, in that presentation, we uh, we go through our compendium of quantitative risk management signals at the beginning, and then we would jump into the qualitative research that has helped us and our clients stay well ahead of consensus first half of the year. Everyone missed the equity rally besides us and a handful of other uh, investors. Uh, second half of the year, Pretty much everyone, <laughs> except for me and Jim Bianco, uh, missed this blow, this bond market blow up. So, uh, in our opinion, I think it's very important uh, that we continue to 
uh, anchor on the same Bayesian uh, quantitative risk management frameworks, uh, continue to execute the same Bayesian research process that has allowed 42 macro clients to significantly outperform uh, over the past couple of years, both in 2022 and 2023. So we're excited to, uh, again, uh, refresh that monthly presentation for our clients today. Uh, it's only 100 bucks to subscribe, uh, so definitely come check it out uh, if you uh, are not a client of 42 macro. So again, uh, everyone have a great weekend. We'll catch you back here on a Monday. Cheers.